Hey everyone, welcome back to Sip and Dip with Chelsea. For today's video, I will be teaching you how to recreate this super fun summertime watermelon mani. And without further ado, let's dive in. For today's video, I will be using Sparkling Co. liquids. I'll also be using a 180 grit nail file, a makeup brush, a toothpick, and a buffing block. For the watermelon nail art, I will be using this set of brushes that I got on Amazon. I will have them linked down below. I'll be using four different colors, so I decided to just go ahead and grab four different brushes. For my nail art, I will be using just simple acrylic paint that I got at Walmart. It usually ranges from 50 cents to a dollar. I will have the colors listed down below in case you're interested in the exact color, but it's just simple pink, green, white, and black acrylic paint. For my base dip color, I'm using Aloha, which is from Revel. It was part of their Wanderlust collection, and as you can see, it's gorgeous creamy pink. To encapsulate and protect my nail art, I'll be using Revel Nails Vivian, which is their clear dip powder. To start, you'll need your base bond, your powder, and a toothpick. I have already prepped my nails, so if you'd like to see a video on how I prep them, I will have that link down below. But for now, I'm going to just fluff my powder and get it ready for application. For this video, I decided to do three full dips. So with my finger pointed slightly downward, I am just being very cautious around my cuticle area, being careful not to get any of the base bond on my skin, and making sure I cover my entire nail. Now dip into your powder, and immediately following, you can use your toothpick or whatever tool you're using to clean around your cuticle area. This just gives you that nice clean line and make sure there's no product on your skin. So I'm going to continue on and follow these steps for all five of my fingers and I will see you guys in a minute. Now that you're done with your first layer, you can dust off any excess powder. Now it's time for your second layer of dip powder, so you will follow the exact same steps, being very careful not to get any base bond on your skin, and just carefully coat your entire nail. The key to having your dip powder nails not be too bulky is making sure that your liquid is thin and that you don't have a lot of it on your brush. So every time I go to do a layer, I make sure that I wipe off my brush as much as possible before I put the liquid on my nail. Also, don't forget to be wiping your brush off each time that it touches your nail. So that means using a napkin, a paper towel, or a lint-free wipe and brushing it off really well before it goes back into your bottle. This helps prevent cross-contamination. And if you've ever struggled with having your liquids get thick or goopy, this might be a great tip to try out for you. 
This same tip also applies to your top coat, so be sure after each time that it touches your nail that you are also wiping it off on some sort of napkin or paper towel. And another tip to help save your liquids is before I put my liquids away when I'm done with the set, I like to use a napkin and wipe off the rim and the top of the bottle just in case, and that way it doesn't get sealed shut as well. So our second layer is done, and now we can brush off the excess powder. Now it's time for our third and final layer. So again, with our base bond, we are just going to follow the same steps as we did for our first and second layer, and continue on and do this for all five fingers. So I did get to experiment and play with my glass vials that I just featured in my last video, and I really love them. They are so gentle on your natural nails, and I'm really excited because I'm going to film a video comparing the glass vials with an emery board file, so the 180 grit, so you guys can see the difference and what I think, and I'm just super excited. I used them again for this set, and as you can see, I feel like my shape is super crisp, like my lines are very straight and I don't have any rounding on the sides, which is something I struggle with when I shape my nails. So I'm really excited to share kind of like a tutorial and a comparison video next. So Bonafide Beauty, the one that I featured for Glass Files in my last video, was actually kind enough to send me another set of glass nail files which has a different grit. So I am going to be comparing two different types of glass nail files with this 180 grit nail file and they sent me a glass cuticle pusher so i'll also be showing you guys that so i'm really excited about that and you guys are going to die when you see these glass files that she sent me like if you thought the last ones are cute you guys are going to be so blown away by this next set Okay, so we are done with our third and final layer. We can put away our base bond, put away our dip powder, brush off any excess powder, and move on to our solidify. So with your solidify, you will apply a very generous amount to all of your nails. This is okay to get it on your skin. This is what's going to activate and harden your dip powder. couple minutes have passed and your nails are dry, you can go ahead and start filing and shaping your nails. So once you're done filing your nails, you can move on to buffing them. And the buffing block seriously is such a miracle worker. If you have some lumps or bumps, or maybe you're not happy with the way it looks around your cuticle area, really take the extra time to buff them out. I like to run the buffing block right around the free edge and this just smooths it out. Or maybe if you feel like there's a ridge right there, just take the time and use the buffing block. If you think you're done buffing, go back and buff a little bit more. It, it just gives that more professional look in my opinion if you take the time to really buff them smooth. 
So these are the same buffing blocks that I featured in my Amazon haul and what I love about them is they're not too sharp so I don't ever cut my skin but they do the job so they still have enough grit on them that I can get several manicures and they buff my nails smooth and they can take out a bump or a lump so I really love these. So when you're all done filing and shaping your nails you can go ahead and dust off the excess powder. So now we're going to move on to the artwork. So I've got a little plastic plate here with foil in it just for easy cleanup. I've got my paint, my brushes, I've got a little cup full of water and a paper towel to clean them off on. So for this first part, I've got my shorter bristle brush. We're going to be doing the pink part of the watermelon on my ring finger first. And I'm going to just shake up my paint to make sure that it is nice and even and you really don't need very much you only need a tiny little drop for this design so now i'm going to run the bristles through the paint just to make sure that it is evenly coated and i don't have any frays or strays on my brush also today's video is a judgment free zone i am new to the hand painting so please be kind and know i am learning and practicing right alongside with y'all so to start, I'm going to do my edge, my little semicircle part first, and then I'm going to fill it in. And one thing that I did learn through this practice and trial is when you go to do your, if needed, your second layer, which I did feel like I needed it, make sure that your paint is dry. It's kind of like painting walls. You can't just go over it when it's still wet because you're gonna move and manipulate the first layer. So definitely make sure that the paint is dry before you go in for your second layer. Okay, so now I am going to work on just doing one more layer to make sure that it is a nice full pink color. And this is what I was just talking about. I wish I would have gave it just a little bit more time to dry and I think it would have gave it a better coverage so just a little tip learn from my mistakes give your first layer time to dry so now i'm going to move on to painting the pink part for my thumb and i'm going to follow these same steps start with doing an outline and fill it in you could definitely do this same design with gel. I think it would probably look so much better because gel seems to be very forgiving. Like it, it is still movable until it is cured. So if you have gel, totally give this design or maybe even play around with some other cute summer designs with your gel. So once the pink is dry, you can move on to the white part and I am going to use another brush. You could definitely clean off your brushes in between and use one brush for this whole design. But since I do have four, I don't mind and then that way my colors don't accidentally bleed if I don't clean them off well enough. So again, I'm going to just make sure I've got the paint completely coated on my bristles. I don't have any strays or frays and I'm going to get started on going around the pink edge and I will have to do two coats of this as well and just be sure that the white is completely dry before going over it for a second time. So major props to all of you ladies and gentlemen out there doing hand painting because it is not easy. I'm trying to figure out the best way to keep my finger still and steady. I did order some products that might help me with that. They should be here within the next few weeks. So I'm really excited to show you guys that and give them a try. So maybe it'll help me with my next painting attempt. 
So once the white paint is dry, I'm going to go over them one more time for a second layer so that my white is nice and bright and opaque. So now that our second layer of white is dry, we can move on to our green paint. And again, just a tiny little drop will do. And I've got my new brush and I'm going to trace right around the white edge. So with brushes, the thinner and the longer the bristles, the thinner your line is going to be. So since this I want this line to be thin, that's why I chose this specific brush. And at the beginning you saw I chose a shorter bristle brush for the pink because I was going to be doing some filling in for that section. So when you choose your brushes, that might be a little bit of a tip and advice that I could give. And you know, if you mess up, you can always just bomb brass it and make the line a little bit thicker or you could clean it up with some water or some rubbing alcohol or some um, nail polish acetone and it'll be okay. And <laughs> these two watermelon nails, like I say, they will probably look like sisters and not twins and that's okay. I don't know if I'm going to do this on my other hand, but Hey, at least they're the same base color. So I messed up a little bit with the green on my thumb, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm just having fun and practicing and hopefully I will get better and better with each try. Okay, so let's move on to our little watermelon seeds. So for this, I am using just a simple black color. And again, I've grabbed a new clean brush just because I have them, but you could definitely clean your brushes off between colors and reuse brushes. So I'm just kind of placing them where I think it would look good, no rhyme or reason. I'm starting at the top corner and then I'm going to make my way down and just space them out how I think it'll look good. So I think if you wanted the rounder part of the seed and then more of a point at the bottom, I think it'd be a great idea to use a dotting tool. So dot a little spot of black for a circle and then pull it into a point beneath it or above it, whichever way you want your seeds to point. But I was just going with quick, easy, simple. So. I wasn't trying to do all that, but definitely an idea if you try to do this look. 
You could probably also use a toothpick even if you were trying to do dotting or even just make the little seeds. So now I'm going to let my artwork dry and I will see you in a minute to clear encapsulate. Okay, so everything is dry. I've got my clear dip powder, I've got my base bond, and I am going to just encapsulate my artwork, so just the two nails, not the other ones, and this will help protect it when I go to file and buff. So with Solidify, I am going to apply it to all of my nails, but I will only be buffing and reshaping my thumb and my ring finger. So now that it's dry, I am gently buffing over the clear dip powder. I'm not going to do a whole lot of buffing on the artwork piece, but just kind of going around it, making sure the nail is smooth and everything is shaped how I want. Okay, so now it's time to apply Solidify. This will be your last layer before you move on to your top coat. So with a napkin or a paper towel, I like to wipe off my nails once they are dry this just ensures that I have no solidify on my skin or left on my nails and it will help protect my top coat from getting thick or goopy in the bottle. It's just an extra precaution against cross-contamination. So with my Glossy Coat 2.0, I am going to apply my first layer on all of my nails, being careful not to get any of this on my skin. So a little trick I like to do, and you'll see me do it right here, is I pull my skin on the sides down so I can get the brush all the way to the edge. And then that way I'm not getting any of the liquid. And you can see right here, I'm holding my finger on the side right there. And that just gets the brush all the way to the side without getting it on my skin. So immediately following the first coat, I am following up with my second and final layer of my glossy coat. 
Also be sure that you are wiping your brush off on a paper towel or a napkin or some sort of lint-free wipe so that you are not adding anything back into your bottle. So a random little fun fact for you guys is I actually had more chipping and issues in the corners of my nails at the free edge when I had shorter nails and that's because it's difficult to get your brush all the way around and to that edge and with longer nails I can go all the way around without touching my skin. So if that's something you struggle with and you have shorter nails, if it's possible, maybe let them grow out and see if it helps. Okay, so I am all done with my summertime watermelon nails and I'm actually really proud of myself for trying this. I usually just go straight to decals because it's my comfort zone, but I encourage you guys step outside of your comfort zone and give something fun a try. So after about 10 minutes have passed, I like to follow up with my favorite cuticle oil. I am obsessed with this. You guys have seen me use this now. I can't believe I've been using a different type of oil for the past three years and I really didn't know how bad it was until I tried this. Paying the money for a quality cuticle oil is such a game changer. It's not sticky, it's not oily, it's not greasy. It absorbs into my skin like pretty much as soon as I'm done applying it and I don't mean that in a way that they don't feel hydrated afterwards. They feel so moisturized especially with washing my hands as often as i am now and a little bit goes a long way i do have a link down below if you're interested for five dollars off your first order they have little pens which are great for in your purse too you guys will be so impressed if you give her a try so here's the finished product for both my hands and I don't think I'm going to be tackling trying this on my dominant hand just yet. I still need to practice a bit, but I am really loving it. I think this is so fun, perfect for summer. Definitely expect to see some more fruit manis from me because I love that trend right now. Feel free to tag me on Instagram if you guys try to recreate this look or if you are hand painting, trying something new, or maybe just doing some super cute fruit manicures. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.